see you rolling and hating. Catch me riding dirty, catch me riding dirty. Tell you what, this bike really is great on fuel. Well, hello, YouTubers, legends of the realm. Welcome back to the channel. First up, I can only apologise. It's been uh, it's been a couple of weeks since um, since Silverstone, uh, which has been uh, which has been cracking. But uh, yeah, I've not really had much of a chance to get out and do any kind of uh, any kind of videos recently. What with work and the weather hasn't been uh, hasn't been that great recently up up around this neck of the woods, unfortunately. Last couple of weeks, it's been uh, it's been great. I've been having to work, do work in the garden, or do do other stuff. So, unfortunately, the old uh, the old social media YouTube channel has taken a bit of a taken a bit of a hit recently. So, but thank you for sticking with the channel. And uh, I don't know what's happened recently, but uh, the channel's had a massive uh, it's had a massive bump in subscribers. So I guess I must be doing something right. So, but uh, yeah, thank you to each and every one of you that continues to uh, subscribe to the channel. So just. Uh, Grabbing a quick and cheeky half an hour run out in the 750 as it's been a few weeks since I've been out on it. It really has. It's it's been a challenge to say the least. It's been a challenge. A challenge getting out recently so but so here we are this is only the second it's actually only the second run out I've had on the 750 since uh, since Silverstone so and even then I've had to fix the rear indicators for some reason I don't know why they decided to throw the hand in the wiring on the indicators themselves and actually uh, party company with a little Warren actually part in company with the uh, with the PCB, so I had to go and solder them back on again. Definitely sounds better with the baffle out, which has now been removed again, ready for. Uh, the next track day, which is now booked, so we're off to uh, we're off to Nick, off to Knock Hill next month in September. So that'll be uh, that'll be good. Go give us a razz round, and then that'll probably be the last of the track days for this year, anyway. And then we'll see what happens next year. Anyone who's been on the channel for a while, know the 750 is actually due to come at the end of its uh, the end of its term, its finance term next year. Um, I do own most of the bike, but. We'll see what happens next year, what it's like to change it for. Very, very keen to try out this new GSX-S1000 Tourer. Whatever that may or may not be like. But with potentially doing more track days, it's uh, not lost on me that maybe just a little bit more punch down the straights would be handy. But having said that, she holds her own well. She really does. It's a surprisingly capable little bike. <laughs> Traffic control? Oh, I don't tell me they're doing, I mean, road works. going on here. Should have gone the other way. Five hours later. So as you can see it's a bit overcast. The best of the weather in Scotland has officially ended I think. Certainly in the uh, certainly in the northeast anyway. One downside of living in Scotland. Literally we've had all seasons today. 
enough about that. Let's talk about the 750. So we're now just approaching 3,000 miles. We've done a track day. We've got another track day booked. Michelin Pilot Power GPs have been great. I've been caught out in the wet with them once. Last time I was out on this, it was a bit damp. Can't say they were really an issue at all. Is it be good enough for road use anyway? And certainly track use. Couldn't fault the front tyre at all. It uh, certainly performs a lot better than uh, honestly thought it would do. Back tyre, as you saw from the previous Silverstone video, looks like it was maybe just running a little bit hot or a little bit cold. But either way, I think it was just more of a tyre pressure issue than anything else. But the tyres are certainly more, more than capable of the uh, of the bike's performance without a shadow of a doubt. And all the bike really needs is some suspension work. Brakes were good. Couldn't fault the brakes on track at all, really. Uh, plenty of plenty up for the job. Obviously, I've got braided lines on this um, HEL braided lines, which has made a big difference. Like I said before, adjust the suspension, maxing out the preload, made a big difference to ground clearance, which it was really struggling with. I've actually since just left it as it is because it's super to be on the road as well. Not as wallowy. Not as wallowy on the road. A bit more, uh, a bit more compliant. Loving these power GPs, got to say, they're really, really good. What a fun little bike this is! What a fun little machine! So this will actually bring me nicely on to things I like and dislike about this bike. But we'll, we'll find somewhere further up the road, we'll stop, we'll jump off, I will have a little walk around and uh, I'll tell you what I think of it. Long overdue post this one. Oh, then 3,000 miles just about uh, so first first up then um, like I said I've been uh, actually preparing to do a video um, on likes and dislikes on this bike for quite some time I just not got around to doing it so we'll start out with the top um, as we're still sat on the bike what I do like I like the instrument display um, I think the I think the instrument cluster is all you need uh, nothing that you don't you couldn't possibly need any more information than what, what is there. Uh, you'll have seen from the GSX-S1000 video that I did, um, the, the, the test ride on that. Um, cracking bike, a um, bit more bit more sedate, a bit more grown up than the 750 is. Uh, a bit bigger, a bit more comfortable, well comfortable in a different way. But uh, I think, you know, the, the display on that, I appreciate why they've used it, because obviously because the power modes and other bits and pieces they've needed they've needed the functionality within that. But I think I think this display is is fantastic. It's easy to see in all light levels, um, and I've not had an issue with the display whatsoever. Easy to use. Uh, switch gear does does its job. Uh, two trips, two trips, and that's that. Uh, on when you go up and to go down, it's just average average MPG range. 
MPG and US units and uh, that's it and that's all you need oh and of course you've got traction control temperature and uh, fuel gauge and that's all you need I find um, I just leave it in traction control one uh, never needed to be honest never needed it even on track um, I was struggling to get the uh, struggling to get the traction control light to flicker um, unless you're really really hand fisty with it but it does go you to riding it quicker um, as a result so anyway that's the top of the bike um, brake levers obviously I changed those because I thought that uh, they just looked a bit boring and wanted something that's a bit more adjustable um, these are okay obviously these are flip up ones uh, pewage but uh, I really quite like them brake lever guard obviously because it's required for track days some certain some organizers require that so um, it's a bit of a bit of a must fit um, and I just fancy doing something with the bar end weights just to just to tighten it up a little bit like I say quite over the switch gear does everything it needs to and uh, having traction control as well is just that little bit of added security but to be honest the bike doesn't really make enough power to need it so change the brake lever uh, sorry the brake uh, brake reservoir cover just again just to toss it up mirrors standard mirrors visibility is fantastic no issues with the standard mirrors at all but again it's just more purely purely cosmetic that i changed them in the first place so uh, why well, we change them at all uh, usb power socket there of course obviously for the uh, cameras or GoPro or on track days whatever um, SP connect phone mount which is there but it hardly ever gets used uh, the screen screen works really well that's the second screen I've fitted um, there are other screens available that one was a bit more expensive from Moto Zar as you can possibly see there um, I did do a separate video on that and uh, I just quite like the, the, the style of it the shape of it the design of it was better with these four screws and uh, obviously with the 750 logo so I went with that one so a uh, bit of shout out to Sanjin again on that one because uh, it was actually him that had, had it fitted to his 750 so I'd seen that and I thought oh not bad that not bad at all uh, yeah I also think the uh, the mirrors look better uh, than the standard ones they look a bit uh, look a bit naff the uh oh someone's been out playing uh what was I going to say yeah indicators I changed the indicators for LEDs obviously it comes with standard just a standard lamp LED uh standard lamp indicators change those the headlight is much much better since uh since I changed that and the indicators the, the side lights as well are also LED so it's LED headlight and side lights um if a tick rad guard brady brake lines peerage crash protection uh yeah as you can see the tires are uh, tires are still a bit ripped up there from from the first fry on track and they're not quite not quite scrubbed up yet so that's that uh yeah top top of the bike no issues at all like i say i like, I like the instrument cluster i like the comfort of the bike i think it's really really good um when i first bought it i thought the the seat was really hard and it has definitely got better with mileage uh, i mean the bike itself is doing at the minute it's showing 39 mpg there it'll it'll do more than that um it will get up in the 40s if you uh, if you're cruising around but now i've had it tuned it's, it has dropped a little bit but um it's worth it for the for the grin factor alone so yeah um styling i do like the styling of the bike um, i think it looks good i think the front end and the rear end especially the tail unit and the uh, the seat pod i think that looks better than the it does in the gsxs thousand um certainly the uh, the outgoing gsxs thousand anyway uh, the new one new one looks quite nice it's very gsxr thousand r like but um you can understand why suzuki have gone have gone down that road i say styling styling's all right um looks good the paint itself um i do like the paint uh it's it's not it's not a bad color at all um it wasn't actually the color that i actually wanted i actually wanted a white one um but i got a much better deal on the phantom black um and to be honest i actually really quite uh i've really quite fallen for it, it looks uh it looks pretty good yeah the paint paint care uh needs to be considered as well being being the matte black now a lot of people just use polish but um being being a matte uh, being a matte finish, you should you're supposed to use matte uh, matte associated uh, products. So I use meticulous matte detailer, or you can use muck off or any other matte detailer specific um, to matte paint. Uh, works quite well. Helps keep that helps keep that matte luster without it going too shiny. Uh, I've got that I saw of a sticker on there because the uh, when I had my tail pack on when I went to. Uh, when I went and did the North Coast 500, the uh, the paint here has actually actually rubbed a little bit. It's gone all shiny and it looks a little bit out of place. Um, it's not too bad, but um, 
to the untrained eye, you probably wouldn't notice it. Worst to like about the bike, the handling um, handles really well. Um, tracked out at Silverstone, really, really surprised. I mean, Suzuki don't call it the Apex Predator for nothing, or an Apex Predator for nothing. It works really well. So yeah, handling the bike is really good. Can't really, can't really fought it too much. Only at, uh, only at track on Silverstone, I was noticing that the the pegs were just dicking out a bit too much. So I've now jacked up the, jacked up the preload. Uh, it's actually now maxed out. I've just left it as it is. Um, made a big difference with ground clearance, but that would be my first. That would be the first thing that would probably change if I keep it. Uh, put on some, put on some rear sets. Uh, better, better, better pegs, more adjustable, more adjustability in the pegs, and I would also look at probably doing something um, with the suspension. So there we go. So that's that's it really. I mean, I, I do I'd, like I said, I like the looks, um, LED tail, LED rear light as well. Um, the style of the bike is great. The noise of the bike. Um, it's awesome. It's exactly how a, a sports bike to me should sound like an inline four screamer. Um, and that's that's the other thing as well is I mean I think I think for the price you pay for the bike, um, it's just so much fun to ride. It's it's it really is. It really is. It's cracking. It's cracking. Can't can't report it. It's 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 a hoot to ride. You can use it all. The engine's performance for the road is all you need, and you can. You know, you can wind it up and you can use it and you can keep it singing. Um, I'm not a thousand where you, you know, you kind of, it doesn't, this bike doesn't kind of make you go, whoa, that's too quick. Um, which you do miss sometimes, I've got to say, uh, when you've been used to riding a thousand cc for a while. Um, but I, I bought this purely because I already had a thousand F and I wanted something a bit different. Um, I can use something, get something you can use more out of, get more out of. Um, and you can certainly, it certainly does that. You can you can ride it. You can ride it like you stole it, and uh, you're not you're not being too silly speed wise. Um, but uh, it does get three figures plenty quick, plenty quick. So yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's loads of there's loads of good things you can say about the bike. Um, there really are downsides. Um, yeah, I promise I promise myself this would be a this would be an honest review um, in regards to likes and dislikes. Um, I'm not gonna go through and, and, and put up captions for like this, don't like that, etc, etc. Um, there's lots of other channels that do that, so I'm just going to, I've just been ad-libbing so far and will continue to do so. What I still like about the bike, you can still hold stuff in the tail section, um, not a lot, but you can get your wallet in there, you get your keys in there. Um, I normally carry a rag or something to clean my visor if I'm going for a short run. It's easy to clean. Uh, like I said before about the paint, as long as you're aware about the matte, matte finish, then then you know you you kind of you kind of golden really. Um, the original tyres were S21s. Um, I actually made reference to them before. I think I mentioned they were S22s, but they weren't. They were S21s on this, and originally um, they were okay. I was kind of expecting a bit more than 2,000 miles out of them. To be fair, um, out of a set, the front would have done about two and a half, probably 3,000 miles, but um, the rear was done at uh, 2,200 miles. So. Uh, and obviously did a separate video on uh, on on that and fitting and fitting these GPs. And I've got to say, so far, these tyres have been fantastic. Twenty ones were good, but I personally I felt they were a bit vague. Um, just just didn't quite feel like you were connected to the road um, at times. Uh, I didn't try them on track, obviously, because I wore them out. But but yeah, I mean, I, I'd have done a track day with the S twenty ones. They would have been fine. But but these these give more feedback for sure. So it's a power GPs for me so far. Big thumbs up. I've, they've been in the damp once. Um, didn't have any issues taking it easy anyway. So what else can we say? Uh, it's cheap. It's cheap to buy bits and pieces for. It's cheap to own. It's cheap to run. Um, I'm paying I'm paying less than three hundred pounds uh, a year for two for two bikes. Um, the second video will be coming um, on 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 that bike uh, once I actually get around to doing that one as well. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's there's loads of things you can say about it. Probably, I'll say now uh, before I forget, and I've, I've obviously hinted at it already. The biggest thing about this bike is value for money. It is an absolute bargain for what it is. Um, you know, it, you can tour on it, you can scratch on it, you can do track days on it. It does everything you want it to do, just like most bikes. But you know, you just have so much fun in you have so much fun in doing it along the way. And for the price of the bike, and for the, the the relative price for the bits and pieces that you can get for them, um, to tune it up a little bit or make it, you know, even if you just throw an end can on it and have done with it, that's all it really needs. 
Um, it doesn't need the headers. I've decatted the headers just because I wanted to. Um, you don't get a lot of uh, power out of removing the cat on these, if I'm honest. Um, but I did it because I just wanted to go belt and braces with it. Just go to keep the cat in place and just throw an in can on it just to make it sound better and just go ahead with the tune. Um, you know, this is obviously decatted with a filter and a power commander 5 and it's got the quick shifter on it. And again, I guess that leads me into the gearbox. Uh, the gearbox on the bike is fantastic. Uh, can't fault it at all. Typical Suzuki. Shifts well and, and just throwing the quick shifter on it just, just gives it a new lease of life. Um, the bike's cracking with it on. It really, really is. Yeah, as, 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 a, as a package at the crate. It's great. So, I guess that brings me to the negatives. The negatives. If you can call them that, there are there are obviously there are drawbacks with some bikes. Um, where I'm going to start, I think we'll start there. And if you don't know what I'm looking at, it's this this swing arm. Now, it's it's redesigned. It's redesigned from the GSR 750. Obviously, the model in the the GSR 750 was the first model before this one. What I don't like about it. It's just design. It just looks cheap. Um, now I know it's the, the the bike is the bike is a is is a value. It is a value budget bike. But I think if they just I think a lot of people, to be honest, would have just spent a little bit more money on it and bought the bike regardless. If it just there was a couple little bits of pieces that were just a little bit better finished. Generally speaking, the quality of the bike is actually very good. But the swing arm's garbage. I just don't like the design of it much at all. It's easy to adjust the chain. That's, that's, that's not really a problem, but, but what you will find is that over a period of time is the inside of the swing arm in here gets gets pebbled ashed and it actually starts to go rusty. So if you're looking at one that's used, that's worthwhile uh, keeping in mind and having a, having a look at that, make sure it's all been kept clean underneath. So yeah, that's that's the first that's the first thing. <laughs> Second thing is the paint. Um, it does mark easily, being the matte finish. That is that is probably the only downside with it. I think the frame, the frame's a bit, the frame's a bit cheap as well, and the weight of the bike at 214 kilos, it's not exactly, it's not exactly lightweight. So I think you know Suzuki did a bit more than that, but again, you know it's it's built, it's built to a price, it's built to a price to do a lot of things and do them well. So other than that. Yeah, there's there's not you know, I think I think when you when you've got you've got to be subjective when you when you try to criticize criticize bikes of this caliber at this price level. Because yeah, of course there are better finished bikes, but also they cost more money. It's it's a lot of things to a lot of people this bike, but you know, some people might look at it and go, no, nah, I don't like it. Or the fact it's got Suzuki on the tank. Or or not actually in this case. Um it's 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 it's, it's on the bottom. But the other thing I don't like, I wish I mean, this is 106 horsepower at the rear wheel, which is plenty for the road. On the track, sometimes you just wish that you just had a bit more power, and, and maybe even sometimes on the road. Although it's it's not exa it's not lacking, and it, it really is it really is splitting hairs. But I think if Suzuki gone down the route of taking the K5 GSXR 750 engine and didn't detune it and left it with its 100 and 130 odd horsepower, then then I think it might have create might have caught a bit more of an audience um well i think it's at it's power level at the minute i think maybe some people um would probably go for the z900 being 123 brake just a little bit more i mean this is what 114 uh mine's been tuned up and it's got yeah probably what 100 and probably about 123 brake now as well um at the crank of course but at the rear wheel it's 106 but which is which is plenty, which is plenty really. Again, for road use. But I've got to say, you know, um, overall, I know it's my bike, but you know, for the pr <laughs> again for the price it is, <sighs> you're really really struggling to get better. You really are for it for, for as as a package, as an overall package. And I know you know, 750s get a lot of stick. But I think I think at Silverstone a lot of a lot of eyes were kind of opened a little bit as to as to how capable these bikes actually are. Um, down the longer straights, yeah, you're losing out to the to the bigger bikes, but you know you can really ride it quite hard, um, and you can have an absolute hoot um, doing so. And and it's you know it's it's a cheap bike to own and run, and that's and that's that's what it's all about. And it's just fun. 
it's just a fun bike. You can just rag it everywhere and it doesn't scare the hell out of you. You're not doing 130 mile an hour everywhere before you feel like you're actually using it. Um, and and that's, there's a lot to be said for that, I think. Um, there's a lot to be said. So, yeah. Um, I can't actually think of anything else uh, I was going to mention about it. Um, it's totally un this is totally unscripted as as all my videos are. Um, I did actually write down a load of stuff that I was going to uh, that I was going to actually actually talk about in this video. In fact, let me get my, let me get my phone out and see what I was actually going to mention because I put it down in a list of stuff. But I think I've pretty much covered it all. I mentioned about the suspension, which is a bit budget. Pick up my rubbish. Seven fifty. Right. I said looks. Looks are subjective. Some people like it, some people don't. Versatility. Yes, it's very versatile. Um, it's it, it's all day comfortable. Like I said, you can tour on it, do whatever. It'll do 200 miles in a tank um, if you really push it. Um, and I've had I've had 100 and, I've 100 and 198 miles out of a tank on it touring. Simplicity. Yes, that's right. It is very simple. Um, it's a simple bike. It does everything you need it to do, and doesn't do anything you don't. Um, everything is covered on that basis. Um, basic it is basic yeah no power there's no power modes there's none of that crap on it it's just got traction control one two and three and that's it it doesn't have any power modes you don't need you just jump on it turn the key and go and there's a lot to be said for that rather than uh, a friend of mine's got an Aprilia Turono you know you have to sit there and faff around the settings before you get it in the right mode before you ride it so a lot to be said for that fun I've always mentioned that fun usable power less is more I've already mentioned that as well um, the dash I mentioned that. The noise, yeah, it rips without a shadow of a doubt. Sounds fantastic. Uh, price, cost of ownership, I've already mentioned. Easy to modify, yeah, so, and the bike is easy to work on as well. Uh, ergonomics, yeah, I find it very comfortable. I'm six foot four and don't have any issue with it. Uh, apart from when I first bought it, like I said about the seat, but it's, it's got a lot better with age and mileage. Um, understated, it is understated. Everyone looks at it and goes, Oh, it's 750, it's slow, blah blah blah. blah. But I'll tell you what, you keep it wound up and spinning, it, it's it's surprising. It opens up a lot, it's, it, it widens a few eyes, I think, and surprises a few people. So, yes, it is understated. And I like being the underdog. <sighs> Dislikes, yes, I didn't. I mentioned about the headlight, um, it was pretty crap, but uh, the the Changed it to an LED unit has, has helped that tenfold. Um, I haven't had an issue with mine so far. They do tend to, they are known to crack, um, but mine's been okay. Um, I think probably because I fitted the LED um, early on, so it didn't it didn't crack the plastic. That is a that is a known fault with them. Uh, see Allen Bolt's design. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so they've spent spent the time using the key to get the seat pod off, but to get the seat off itself, you've got to take that out, and then you've got to take the bolts off inside underneath there so that could have been better you know it wouldn't have done much to put another lock in here and just turn the key take it off so yeah that could have been it would have been nice to have a quick release seat swing arm I mentioned and the paint I mentioned and that is that so yeah in three years of ownership which will be in March next year that is it <laughs> a lot of people would say that you know, oh well, 3,000 miles, that's not a lot, but I think, given what I've done with the bike, it's plenty to learn and understand what's good and what is bad about it. Oh, easy start. That's something else that's quite handy. You don't need it, um, but actually once you've got it, it's nice to have. And the other thing as well, what I did notice what I did notice as well is it's quite handy is the fact that it starts without having to pull the clutch in which you know is an insignificant thing really in the grand scheme of things but I have to say it's nice to better just jump on the you know turn put the key in the ignition turn on the bike and just press the start button and it's done whereas you know you've got to stand there and hold the clutch in and all that it's, uh, I don't know. it's just a bit nanny state I think really I understand why but it's not needed so there you have it 
once again the GoPro battery died halfway through me talking about something so with that uh, waffling on anymore um, I think the only thing I didn't really mention too much of about was with the brakes um, brakes have been totally fine um, the whole time I've had the bike sticking the braided lines on has made a big difference they're certainly uh, more responsive um, don't seem to be quite so spongy uh, more more instant uh, more instant feel for me um, instant bike they didn't uh, they didn't fade at all um, on track so um, which was one of the main reasons for me fitting them in the first place so I can't really uh, can't complain about the brakes whatsoever um, and they're still using the standard pads as well so I dare say stick in some um, aftermarket SPS uh, centre pads and uh, they'd be they'd be even better again so really can't complain at all um, also I didn't mention about the fueling um, Fuel on the bike as standard has been totally fine for me, um, no issues at all. Uh, when I did uh, when I did install the power commander with the aftermarket tune on it um, that was supplied by the uh, by the supplier, um, it was a bit yeah, it was a little bit it was a little bit snatchy um, as you'll have seen in the other video um, that I did the power commander five off the power commander five installation. But since since having it uh, custom tuned, it's been it's been absolutely faultless really to be honest, and and the bike just. You get it up to six thousand revs, uh, six and a half, seven thousand revs, and it just, it just, it just sings, and you just, you just keep it, keep it six, seven thousand revs and up, and it's just, it's just awesome, and you can just keep it buzzing there all day. Um, it really is, it really is great. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's tough to, it's tough to find negatives um, on a bike that uh, you actually generally quite like. But I have to say, um, yeah, I mean, I think again. You've really got to you've really got to look at this bike as a as as for its price point, it's really it's really difficult to beat. Um, I'm sure you know an MT09 or a Z900 would be just as good, but you know they're not without their foibles either. So it really comes down to what you want, um, budget etc. As well along the way. So there we go. So I'm just about to go and throw a rag over this, but yeah, no, it's been uh, so far so far. I've got to say. Um, coming up for three years of ownership, it's been it's been absolutely faultless. Like I say, not had any, haven't had any issues with it at all. Um, really, really haven't, really haven't. Can't fault it. And the gearbox now is uh, is 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 like butter. It really is. So, so there we are. So hopefully that's a, a very quick, um, a very quick video regarding. That's a very quick video regarding the uh, the, the, the the likes and dislikes of of my GSX S750. Once again. Thanks for watching, sticking with the channel, and uh, yeah, um, please stick around, stay tuned, and uh, there'll be more to come. We'll catch you soon. Thanks again. Thanks.